This year marks the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. The skies of Great Britain were awash with dogfights, astounding feats of flying and endless tales of gallantry and daring do as the RAF defended the nation against Hitler's Luftwaffe. The significance of the efforts of the RAF would be summed up by Prime Minister Winston Churchill in August 1940. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. However, in this video, I'm going to shine a light on the interesting link between the Battle of Britain and the RNLI. In the early 1800s, Sir William Hillary, a former militia officer and philanthropist, living on the Isle of Man, he witnessed many shipwrecks and had helped to rescue many people from the sea. It was during this time he proposed the idea of a national institution for the preservation of lives and property from shipwreck. After initially being disregarded by the Admiralty, Hillary, along with other philanthropists and politicians of the time, successfully formed the RNLI in 1824. The RNLI is just as important as it ever has been, consisting of trained volunteers, of lifeboat men and women, who selflessly seek to rescue those in need at sea, up and down the coast of the United Kingdom, the service saving over 140,000 lives at sea since its inception. One of these lives saved has a special significance to the Battle of Britain. In continuous dogfights with the enemy, the old generation is leading the new in the struggle to save civilization as we know it. During a dogfight on the 3rd of September 1940, 20-year-old Flight Lieutenant Richard Hillary was piloting his Supermarine Spitfire over the North Sea and had just claimed a fifth kill when his squadron was ambushed by a force of at least 50 Luftwaffe fighters. They must have been 500 to 1,000 feet above us and coming straight on like a swarm of locusts. I remember cursing and going automatically into line astern. The next moment we were in among them and it was each man for himself. As soon as they saw us spread out and dived, the next 10 minutes was a blur of twisting machines and tracer bullets. Richard continued to weave in and out of the attacking loof of her planes when an ME-109 scored a hit on his Spitfire. In a second, the cockpit was a mass of flames. Instinctively, I reached up to open the hood. It would not move, but this took time, and when I dropped back into the seat and reached for the stick in an effort to turn the plane on its back, the heat was so intense that I could feel myself going. I remember a second of sharp agony. I remember thinking, so this is it, and putting both my hands to my eyes. Then I passed out. He sustained burns to his face and hands as he bowed from the cockpit, falling unconscious as he did so, but coming to in mid-air, he was able to deploy his parachute in the nick of time, landing in the sea. Richard Hillary, a descendant of the RNLI founder, William Hillary, was about to need his forefather's creation. The Lord Southborough, a Watson-class lifeboat, was dispatched from Margate to rescue the downed airmen, the lifeboat itself being no stranger to war, the Southborough having already seen service during the evacuation of Dunkirk, saving over 600 men. Visibility was poor out at sea, but the crew found Hillary, pulled him aboard and helped address his wounds, and gave him a tot of brandy, which was said to have had wondrous results to the pilot's condition. Recovering from his burns, but forever bearing the scars of that fateful day, Richard travelled to America to rally support for the British war effort. During the tour, he would write memoirs of his time during the Battle of Britain. He would later publish them to great acclaim in 1942 as The Last Enemy but no doubt was eternally grateful of his ancestor's creation that saved him on that fateful day. The efforts of civilian institutions during wartime can never be underplayed or devalued. Without the heroic exploits of the RNLI volunteers during the Battle of Britain, how many more of the few would have been lost at sea? They did not discriminate or place blame. They simply braved the waves to help those in need.